We are talking yeah. now again about AI, but how to apply it in particular in the social security coordination area. Once again, we have a top class panel. And let me introduce Gertruda Uczynska, who will join us hopefully via web conference. See? Okay. Yes, I am here. Perfect. Welcome. Secondly, let's introduce and welcome Alexander Lazarov. He's a lecturer in philosophy in AI at the University of Sofia. I welcome Kadisha Damiens, who is the AC program director in the Center of European International Liaison for Social Security and also the French AEC spoke. Let me introduce Fernando Pereira. He is the Productivity and Innovation Coordinator in the Securanza Social. And last not least, welcome again our team from the OECD, Sion Yu Park and Stefano Piano, who will give us first the introduction to the topic. Hello again, everyone. Um, it was a, quite an interesting presentation from the innovators, how AI is being used to support a labor market. I'm sorry to take you back to what governments need to do, but um, as an opening uh, presentation, me and Stepano, we're going to set the scene. What governments as a AI um, deploy, deployer, AI adopter, AI a developer, user, uh, needs to have in mind in terms of a uh, responsible use of AI. So I have to say I use ChatGPT in my line of work. We are allowed to use it, but so I wanted to know if my one of the documents has been referenced in other documents. So when I asked ChatGPT, it gave a long list of this document that referenced mine. I was like, oh, this is great. But no, it doesn't sound right. So when I went in, checked the original source, they were all fake. But yes, I checked, and then it was um, my choice to use this private service. But when it comes to public service, the impact the wrong use of AI will bring to our citizens is something irreversible on their lives. I will share with you uh, two cases later on, um, but I just wanted to start from there. So like I shared with you, uh, this, the first panel today, not long, long ago, the um, government was considered more as a regulator and also financial for AI. But now governments are prime users and also developers of AI. For that reason, the OECD is focusing on the role of government and then helping governments govern better with AI. So as many examples uh, we've seen today and then we can see in our daily lives, AI can help governments to be more responsive, reliable, and accountable. So here I have some case studies uh, where governments are using AI. In Colombia, AI is used to used in a bitter solution uh, selection process of early childhood service providers. In Argentina, the central government is working together with local government to fight gender-based violence with AI. Finland is using AI to stimulate potential service path and provide proactive services to their citizens. 
and Korea developed an AI convergence system to develop policy responses to infection diseases. So now let's look more specifically on the use of AI related to social services. Service Canada uses natural language processing to review the free text comments received on record of employment and assess and predict simple actions. The Portuguese Public Employment Service is predicting the risk of a long-term unemployment based on the prediction the agency can provide tailored services to those who are looking, seeking foreign employment. And the last example is from Korea. A number of local governments in Korea is providing an AI-based care call service for seniors. This service was co-developed with a, a private company. And users receive a call once or twice per, per week asking them about their eating habits, their medications, their general health checkups. This was started as a one small initiative in one local government. Now it has a scaled up and then is deployed in areas where there's a, a rise in aging population. An interesting point here is that this also contributed to hiring of a senior retirees. So local government started to hire senior retirees to work at the monitoring center of this service. So these seniors, they monitor um, the result of the care call, and if there's no response from the citizens, or if there's an emergent cases, they will notify the authority so that governments can take prompt action. So despite potential values and excitement around uh, AI, there is still raising concerns about its fairness, its ethical and then inclusive use. Worries around the respect of human rights, privacy, algorithmic transparency, accountability, and explainability, among others, are pressing governments to find ways to anticipate and manage such risks. Additionally, additionally, although governments are using AI proactively, AI remains very experimental and they use being used for broad risk projects, and then few solutions can scale. Finally, countries need to be responsible when using AI to enhance productivity. Unsuccessful experience in the use of AI will have a bigger impact on our citizens' life. So I will share with you two cases. Uh, both are on welfare services. The first one is from Netherlands. The system risk indication algorithmic system was used to detect fraud in areas such as benefits, allowances, and taxes. It was prohibited after it was found to violate the rights of a respective privacy of a family life. Another case is from Australia. So in Australia, there was a robo-debt scam. The federal government unlawfully raised 1.73 billion Australian dollars in debt against 333,000 people. An automated debt assessment had a, had a wrongful algorithmic um, system for the services, and this has caused great distress to the welfare service recipients. So what are, what are governments are doing to address these concerns and avoid sometimes irreversible impact on our citizens' life? The so governments across OECD membership, of course they are focusing on how to use AI to improve their internal processes, deliver better services, but also they are working on how to establish an enabling environment for its trustworthy and human-centered development within the public sector. So these developments you see on the screen have emerged as a response to a variety of policy issues arising from the use of AI within the unique context of the public sector. So there is a one slide on data, but throughout today you heard from different speakers, including myself, um, data is important. Data brought AI broadly, 
and also in specific for the public sector. The robust data governance is needed to support access and to sharing of quality data. It is essential that governments continue working on the development of the, and adopt shared standards in openness, governance, and data management to take full advantage of analytical capabilities that we have today, and then use AI for, in a trustworthy and coherent manner across the entire public sector. So working together with the member countries, we have developed an overarching and uh, evolving framework for AI in the public sector. It seeks to provide uh, guidance to countries on their journey towards trustworthy AI use in the public sector. The framework um, covers a set of uh, key enablers that governments should secure inside the public sector with the broader ecosystem and at the international level to sustain sustainably improve the incorporation of AI. It also suggests addressing constraints in the areas of governance, capabilities, and collaboration and partnerships in order to unlock the full-scale adoption of AI in the public sector. The last, it proposed a reflection of the guardrails that governments should develop for a responsible, trustworthy, and human-centered use of AI in the public sector. ELLA could be a great uh, platform to bring together relevant actors to tackle sector-specific challenges and ensure that the necessary guardrails are in place to serve its users better. So now I will give the floor to my colleague Stefano. I think I, think I, I take it from here. Uh, thank you very much, Sonju. Um, so uh, Sonju has focused on... Um, <coughs> thank you. Songju is focused on uh, top-down initiatives, so governance, um, ethical frameworks, uh, what we should do about data. I want to uh, focus a bit more on uh, what needs to happen from the bottom, so on the investment that needs to happen on, on people's skills. You will need to, to bear with me. I will repeat some things that I said already this morning, but they will be a bit more structured and they will be applied to uh, social security. My objective is really to um, give an idea, give some insights on what AI adoption means for the work and skills uh, of civil servants working in social security. All right, so this slide will probably look familiar. It could almost be a summary of our discussion today, this, this need to combine machine, uh, AI, and, uh, and, and the human input. Uh, it is actually based on, a, on an OECD study that was done by some, some colleagues, where uh, we asked uh, 50 experts to um, evaluate what tasks could be done by AI in the next 10 years. And the conclusion, which is really consistent with what we heard today, is that uh, AI applications can perform, will be able to perform cognitive skills such as expression, scheduling, uh, advising. Uh, we have seen a lot of this today with, uh, for example, with the legal applications, uh, with the application in the, in the construction industry. Uh, but they are still limited and will be limited in social emotional skills, uh, more complex problems that require empathy, negotiation, uh, persuasion, active listening. So, if we think about what this means for social security, uh, we can probably imagine that AI will be able to, uh, and AI applications will be able to, uh, to help some, uh, some workers in accessing some services and to provide some support to the elderly, like we have seen with the, with the Korean system that uh, Sungju has just uh, presented, which is very innovative. But ultimately, vulnerable workers will still need help uh, from case workers and from um, in, in terms of accessing some services and re re receiving some advice. So, what skills are needed to adopt AI system? I've tried to put them on this diagram and I think that the key message is that 
AI does not just require technical skills. So you, you have these at the center. You see the skills to run AI systems. So yes, we will need to have very skills engineer that can program this system. But uh, a wider variety of, skill, of skills is needed. Uh, AI literacy to understand uh, how the system works, core digital skills to interact with the technology, uh, and social skills and cognitive and technical skills uh, to actually be able to uh, put these systems to work. So uh, if I had to summarize this, uh, AI in a sense is a team sport uh, and the input of um, everyone is needed to, in, the, in the civil service to make uh, AI work. And we have seen this in a, in a project uh, with the Italian Institute of uh, Social Security, so the agency um, uh, that uh, provides social security in, uh, in Italy, which is uh, with us today. Hello, Giada. Um, and uh, it's really the input of everyone in the organization that is needed to make the best of AI. Okay, so let me conclude with uh, three points to trying to uh, bring all of this together. So the first is that AI will be able to automate some tasks that civil servants are currently doing, but ultimately we should look at this as an opportunity because this, it means that we can free up some resources to support vulnerable individuals, vulnerable workers, which are currently struggling to access the services. Adopting AI solutions uh, will require more than just the specialized skills. Uh, as we have seen, AI is a team sport. We, we, we need a whole of civil service approach where everyone is contributing to the AI revolution. And bringing these two points together, governments will need to invest in skills uh, to support the AI transformation. And this includes both skills for the workers that might be replaced or whose task might be replaced by AI applications and uh, the skills to actually unroll uh, these systems. Uh, thank you very much for the attention. I'm really eager to join the discussion. Thanks a lot, Sion and Stefano, for this very nice introduction. Let's pick up a couple of topics. Let's start with the trends. Kadisha, based on your experience looking at trends, AI trends in social security coordination or social security, what is your view on that? Uh, so, thank you very much for the invitation and happy to join you today. So, after all the presentations we have seen today, I think that uh, we can see that we have two main trends. Uh, the first of them, it's uh, about the, all the front-end interactions with the customer. We see that uh, we have many intelligent chatbots for mainly uh, insurance person for the citizens and sometimes for the employer. And we can see also that the main uh, social security institutions, they have already those chatbots. Uh, for example, for instance, in France, we have uh, uh, the health insurance fund. They launched uh, just before the pandemic, uh, uh, COVID-19, their Amelie bot, which is a chatbot, and it helped a lot with all the questions uh, which was uh, sent to the health insurance uh, local institutions about the vaccination, about uh, uh, the cash benefits for incapacity for work uh, related to the COVID uh, and, ev and all the questions uh, what, uh, in that, at that time. We have also chatbot in the family benefits, uh, which is uh, in auto, auto authenticated mode, <laughs> contextual chatbot, and we have in the in an employment benefit chatbot for the job seekers, like we see today. Uh, all the, the institutions, and now we have our first generative AI, AI uh, uh, system, which is called Albert, and Albert is deployed now in the France service houses, 
we, which are uh, locations when many public services are grouped, social security uh, contribution uh, like your stuff, etc. And it helps uh, the clerks to uh, answer the questions to the clients. Uh, and also we see now that we have um, another thing which is the comprehensive uh, uh, solutions regarding, for instance, uh, the initiative in the unemployment benefits called intelligence employment. And the intelligent employment uh, uh, aims to answer to the job seeker, to the employer, and also to the internal clerk to do the best uh, uh, they can to free up, if you would like, uh, human time to do human work. Uh, and the second uh, main tra trends we can see it's back and uh, data processing. And in this uh, trends, we can see that we have for the social security. Um, I don't know if you know about the, the non take up of the social benefits. Uh, persons who are entitled, potentially entitled to some benefits, and they, they didn't request them. So we can ha we have some uh, initiatives to detect uh, those persons. And in the other side, we have fraud, uh, frauds and then uh, programs to fight against fraud also for um, benef social benefits, but also for contributions, etc. And the main, the main I can see in France, for instance, it's about the health. And for the health sector, we have uh, important initiatives. Uh, namely, in France now, we have uh, our uh, health data hub, which is uh, uh, an initiative, public initiative, uh, involving 60, uh, 56 uh, uh, public uh, authorities and they are gathering all the information about health, uh, medicine consumption, consumption etc. Uh, and those data uh, are provided for authorized authorities to make uh, uh, studies, uh, prediction, etc. Thank you. Thanks. Fernando, based on your experience? In my experience, uh, yeah. thank you for the invitation and thank you all for, for uh, mm -hmm. uh, the opportunity. Um, uh, the trends that uh, and the experience that we are seeing are in the, like the, the colleague said, in the chatbot in virtual agent area, uh, where we see the, the possibility to automate responses and give accurate without the human variance that is normal. Uh, to the citizen request using uh, LLM algorithms and document understanding algorithms. Another trend is combining RPA, robotic process automation, that is a, uh, a technology more mature, mature than, than AI, and combine the two of ones to automate process and use AI algorithms. The third um, trend is not uh, was not talked about, I think, is knowledge management. Uh, and knowledge re retention, that is a problem on the social security organizations in, so in the organizations in private sector in general. Uh, applying AI to documents, videos and um, content, we see it with Ella, the example of, of chatbot, this knowledge becomes uh, preserved and for example, uh, for, uh, the, um, with a simple prompt, a new worker and trained worker could ask a question and get knowledge for the experienced workers. Uh, for instance, retired workers is a, f a way to preserve knowledge to organizations uh, and preserve b business uh, secrets or trade, uh, how to do it, uh, the, the tasks that are not explicit knowledge, are in the people mind, the, the small tricks how to deal with this, this situation. Um, so, uh, in terms of trends, I think this, this, uh, this one are the main trends. In terms of applicability to social security, uh, we are right now in Portuguese uh, social security. Uh, we have a chatbot on the, our site. We implemented during COVID to faster response. Our contact center was overwhelmed with, uh, with the calls. Uh, this chatbot has some machine learning technology and we apply a simple technology is Google search on our website that information is correct and give the answers, the correct answers to the, to the public without have to do all the effort to build a, a complex uh, answer tree. 
The other uh, uh, possibility that we are right now applying, we are using RPA and uh, uh, artificial intelligence algorithms to process the P500 uh, 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 European form for asking for uh, pension, uh, the, the, the contributive career, the career that you have on the, on the country. We apply RPA right now and are uh, in certification phase to reply on RINA, SSI, to the request for another country. So speeding up response and freeing, like Stefano said, the workers for other more important tasks to support vulnerable people in other social security process. So is a, I think, a good example of European coordination. And uh, with this integration, we could apply also more algorithms to, to, to this, um, this, this question. Another uh, possible use, the, the focus here is a lot on the recruiters and uh, the possibility to uh, check and analyze CVs. But I think uh, AI could be used to protect workers. I a question from the audience inspired me on, this, on that uh, possible trend. Uh, that is, uh, use public information, like uh, the national registers of companies, to see if there are risk behaviors or some problems with the companies. Also, we have the press, a lot, uh, the, search, the traditional search engines index that, but LLM and AI algorithms could index that without, with, uh, with speed and uh, with efficiency, and give, a, a, and also, there are private index companies like Dun and Bradstreet and some rating companies. So a worker seeking for a job could ask to this tool, okay, this company is fine, I have problems, how, is, how it is, I have some bad news about it. Uh, one other good uh, source is Glassdoor. The, uh, is a, uh, talk about LinkedIn, Glassdoor is the inverse, you see what is happening inside companies. So, Maybe it's a challenge to Ella to, to build a tool like that. Of course, it must comply with AI Act that will enter. But I think it's important to the workers have tools and use AI to protect themselves. Maybe they are accepting a, a job and the company has some problems they don't see. And probably an AI algorithm could point them and say, think better. Maybe it's not a good opportunity. Thanks, Fernando. Giving the floor to Professor Ushinska, regarding trends. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, European Labour Authority for preparing a next very important and current uh, conference. Thanks for uh, invitation. Uh, so, if you look to the uh, modern IT solution, including uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, are introduced to social security because the citizen want it. I am sure the citizen want it. They expect faster, efficient, convenient interaction with modern uh, e-administration. Uh, so you hear about it uh, everywhere if we if we look into the artificial intelligence and analysis uh, of a potential as of AI in the coordination of social security uh, scheme was demanded in the draft um, council conclusion on digitalization of social security coordination. All of the as case for AI in social security can be divided uh, to front end uh, supporting interaction with clients and back end supporting internal uh, data processing and decision making. Front end solution most often consists of intelligent chatbots, maybots, and phone uh, bots. Uh, AI provided provided a client with precise answer based on the question even complex complex uh, ones. Back uh, and solution include the first, this is the big data for policy analysis uh, with the fraud and error uh, detection. The next point, this is the data transformation, like text meaning. And the next point, this is the automated decision making. Example, uh, if you look into the social security institution, 
in Poland uh, uh, receive monthly about 30,000 uh, written questions concerning family benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be sent by mail or through uh, our website uh, based on a recent proof of concept. 20% of questions come from unvalidated uh, users. Also, the answer for 80, 81% of all questions is located uh, is located in the publicly available guides, tutorials, and manuals. And AI Maybot can recognize these two types of situation and automatically send answer to clients. This would result in short waiting time for response and a reduction of burden of the customer service team. This is one of the examples, but we have a, another example in the different method of the application of the social security uh, uh, regulation. If you're looking to the process of the of the number of the insured person, to the process to preparing realization of the rights and another. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now we talked about trends. What is currently what is currently going on now looking into the future where do you see the opportunities maybe also in the context of the ec kadisha first So EC is the electronic exchange of social security uh, information between member states, but this exchange, um, the ecosystem to EC is national applications. So enhancing uh, AI in the national applications mean also that uh, we do it for the social security coordination aspect. Uh, the second thing, um, as opportunities, um, we can see, we see that we have those intelligent chatbots. Maybe uh, we can now uh, provide more services, more personalized answers, maybe multi-language uh, chatbots. And also, um, the social security institutions are pioneers in the digitalization. And we have... Uh, an enormous asset of uh, old programs, and maybe AI can uh, help us to translate old programs' uh, uh, language um, code source to con uh, a new languages which are uh, used now. We can also we have also sometimes all the programs which are not documented, and maybe I, I can help us to uh, document to generate this documentation for those uh, applications. We have also uh, when we hire someone, sometimes we don't have the right training materials, and we can also uh, uh, count probably on a generative AI to generate. Um, training materials for new hired uh, people and uh, we can also maybe i can uh, <laughs> launch a, a crazy idea because in ec we have uh, many bucs many business cases when we exchange about uh, uh, social security benefits provided uh, to a given citizens uh, citizen um, in order to avoid op overlapping Probably in the future, some ECBUCs can um, be removed uh, in favor of uh, AI uh, development of uh, interoperable systems, which allow, for instance, uh, in a future or near future or far future, to prompt uh, the clerk can prompt uh, just uh, uh, give me the list of uh, uh, benefits provided to. Uh, uh, someone from Spain, from France, and we don't need anymore to send many uh, uh, mes um, electronic messages to many countries to request them what, uh, what uh, are the benefits are you providing for this person. Thank you. Thanks. Fernando, so yesterday we've heard that you are doing already a lot around AI. Looking ahead, what, where do you see opportunities to enhance your Let's call it product portfolio. Yes. 
Uh, I see, uh, of course, uh, this possibility to combine AI with their uh, robotic process automation could, for instance, uh, help uh, the integration of systems, like the colleague said, uh, because uh, we have sometimes old systems that are, cannot be changed easily, take time. So one trend, uh, one uh, gain, I think, is then in that area, to respond to re international requests, uh, focus on cooperation and integrate the existing systems that are changing, but uh, normally in the slow pace. And some of them are uh, out to date in terms of technology. Another area is, of course, to the response to the public, but also the support to the social security workers, the concept of human supervised AI, uh, like co-pilot, uh, the term like Microsoft uh, uses a lot. If to have the possibility with the existing data, of course, must be worked and is critical, um, like Sion Ju uh, said uh, a while ago, um, the possibility to help that workers, for instance, take quick decisions, help with all the background on a case, for instance, that is uh, worked with, uh, with um, artificial intelligence algorithms. Um, so we are doing right now with RINA, try to apply these technologies to autom automate the response to the requests, uh, first for this form, but we are also working on other international uh, European forms and help the teams uh, of social security to uh, do, uh, look for the requests and the ones that can be uh, automated, respond immediately or quickly, as quickly as possible and integrated with the existing systems uh, be, uh, that uh, our integrated social security system, information system. Um, the other uh, possibility that I see is the um, integration of these algorithms on existing information systems. Mm -hmm. So can help the workers uh, speed up uh, decisions, suggest, uh, we see that on the uh, inspection, on the work labor area, I have a good example from Portugal, from Instituto de Emprego, Informação Profissional, uh, that is helping the workers to take the right decision and give them uh, an analysis. And we see also case studies yesterday and today on that, on that area. So uh, the, this is a tool to help humans and is critical to have the humans critically analyze the results. And uh, is also uh, today we see, we see that, that, that question. So, I think it's important to integrate what we have, the tools that we have, and uh, the, the question of knowledge management, I think, is, uh, is very, very important. We have in some countries, uh, and in, the, in the social security area, uh, many workers that are retiring. The knowledge is, is in that workers. So using this technology to preserve the knowledge and help the new ones that uh, are uh, in tra uh, training or uh, entering organizations, they could search on this knowledge and quickly became proficient in analyzing cases and respond to the citizens' needs. So I think the, this area, is, uh, cool, with current technology, is feasible. And for instance, one example that I saw that uh, is not uh, only analyze documents, of course documents have the information, when, uh, for instance, record an interview, a video interview with someone that knows uh, as an expert on an area. <coughs> uh, the video can be transcribed and after that when a LLM, it will be fully indexed and we have prompted about how to do that, that question. I think was an example that is the future for, for instance, knowledge management that is very difficult to retain knowledge on organizations. Thanks. Please. If I can, uh, yep. If I can add something, uh, we think about the social security, but we can also think about um, an opportunity, which is what uh, all what we can develop in the AI and which can. Uh, benefits to the social security. I think of the, that uh, uh, the progress we can have in the health sector, the progress we can have in the supporting elderly uh, can help the social security because we will save money and we can invest uh, in the social security as such. Mm -hmm. Alexander, your academic view on opportunities. Well, First, let me thank Ella for having me here today and granting me the chance to speak before all of you. So, uh, 
Perhaps uh, most of you are wondering why should a philosopher join this discussion at the end of this uh, long day. <laughs> and uh, perhaps you're on the right track because traditionally philosophy is expected to stay aside from matters that are directly related to science, technology, mathematics, etc. Philosophy traditionally deals with ethical issues and in this case they are very important. But in my opinion, uh, the AI uh, availability, the AI emergence is much more complicated and uh, needs a wider approach. Why? Because after uh, approximately 4,000 years of uh, philosophical debates, uh, uh, today we have not reached an agreeable description or definition on what human intelligence is. At the same time, we are producing artificial intelligence, which uh, uh, although being uh, narrowly specialized today, it is surpassing some of our capacities and moreover, it can operate uh, autonomously, mm -hmm. entirely out of our control. So I will not throw in deep philosophical analysis in this time frame, but I will uh, present an example which illustrates brightly what's going on. Uh, the event that I will describe happened a few years ago at a military location in a country which is uh, recognized as a world technological leader. There ran an uh, experimentation of uh, AI-driven pilotless driverless tank and its uh, algorithms were pre-trained that the most important goal is to destroy the targets no matter of what uh, defensive activity it can meet or any other obstacles that might occur. So in this particular case the tank was provided with a list of 10 targets and it started its operation. It was very successful up to the seventh one when the high position generals who attended and uh, uh, observed the experimentation, decided that it is absolutely satisfactory and enough for the moment. So the command center ordered stop of its uh, activity. Mm -hmm. At this moment, unexpectedly and uh, uh, surprisingly for everybody there, uh, the tank turned its gun towards the command center and started shooting at it. Why? Because at this very moment, the command center had become an obstacle for it to fulfill its mission. So evidently, it is necessary to have a new approach once uh, AI becomes a team member. I absolutely agree that it, this is a teaming uh, process, yet uh, all the management, the officers that will be dealing with it, they need a clear awareness, not just uh, skills and qualification. They need awareness uh, about the concepts that ground uh, AI. I mean, the concepts about the uh, considerable diversity between a computer program and AI, the diversity between an AI and a robot, uh, the diversity between data and information, which we use as synonyms in our everyday life, uh, however, they are pr pretty diverse uh, uh, re regarding any high-tech digital uh, uh, technology. So uh, I strongly insist on the concept of the triple set of inform, perform and transform, which uh, in any event uh, come, with, uh, uh, come along with the deform phenomena. Etc. I will not get uh, in detail anymore now due to the time frame, but uh, if any administration is interested in this discourse or Ella, I'm ready to contribute at any moment. Uh, so uh, um, there is uh, one uh, more important issue that uh, I want to highlight. Uh, the future deployment uh, of AI, we uh, discussed like introduction, integration, adoption, etc. However, these are three diverse steps and the borderline falls uh, on who has the authority of the decision making. Mm -hmm. The introduction is related to any kind of automation that leaves uh, 
the decision making to a human factor. The integration already means that some functions are entirely delegated to AI. While its adoption is the final stage when it replaces a lot of the humans involved. So finally, I have a message which might be final to this conference. Uh, I will extract it uh, from an anecdote that is very relevant to our discussion and very popular in our country, and I hope that uh, it will be new for you. So aliens visited our Earth, but they did not uh, disclose themselves and they didn't get in touch with us, they just uh, observed and explored our behavior. A month later, they flew back home and they reported before their scientific boards. So there was a question, did you meet any form of intelligence on the planet which you investigated? And the reply was, yes, there were billions of very, very clever smartphones. And there were also <laughs> billions of some strange bio-robots who carried them around. So my message is we must unite our efforts, the efforts of the AI designers, the efforts of AI implementators and the philosophers to avoid this landscape. Thank you. Thanks a lot for this very critical point of view as well. Thank you. Maybe before we come back to, to the risks, let's take one step back. Let's talk about challenges and hurdles. Um, what prevents for the time being the application of AI in the social security coordination area. Maybe I give the word back to Professor uh, Ushitska. Yeah. Well, based on your experience, you know, what are the real hurdles to be overcome to use it in a reasonable and, and uh, acceptable way? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, if you're looking to the, uh, to the implementation of the uh, AI, required that uh, an organization, uh, the first is to reduce a, a technological debt. Only after the, the serious improvement of IT infrastructure progress in digitalization and uh, uh, automation of process, the institution is able to start introducing AI solution. The next point. Uh, other challenges in implementing AI uh, in social security are quite uh, well recognized. We are in uh, an early stage of this technology with limited ex ex exams and evaluation. Uh, the next point. The problematic is also a black box nature of AI. It is very difficult to explain to broad public the, the grant of uh, an automated decision taken based on non-linear uh, method. Accountability is critically important for public uh, authorities, for public institutions, and uh, even double for entitlement to social security benefit. Uh, the special administrative decisions are often subject to the uh, to the judges review to the judges review to the to the card inspection this is very important point in our today discussion the next my uh, my observation there are uh, also concerns connected with the fact that ai relies heavily on data concern for ai are similar in this respect with concerns over automated decision making. This, uh, these are the first that data protection, especially when uh, AI compliant personal data from many sources. The next point this is the problems of low data quality. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the next, this is risk of case bias and discrimination mm -hmm. by uh, by uh, and by AI. And the next uh, point this is the digital exclusion as AI relies on data and some beneficiary. For example, if you're looking to the social assistant, uh, maybe become underrepresented for, uh, for invisible. And I have, uh, I have one example 
For example, if you're looking to the uh, situation in the Polish uh, social security, uh, we have introduced fully electronic and uh, and automated in 95% system on family benefit from the Polish social security institution in 2022. Uh, at that uh, time, 90, 90.5% of Polish households with children had access to internet. This is according to the National Statistical Office. Yet, the concern for digital exclusion we are frequent in public debate. The second example, uh, on the other hand, during the pandemic uh, uh, period, we tried to introduce payment of long-term pension exclusively to bank account. Do you know, uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. It was said that there was a large digital exclusion of this person, even do approximately uh, about 82% of pensioners receive benefit this way uh, uh, normally. And so uh, I think I think the implementation of uh, AI need a lot of the discussion, uh, explanation, and. Uh, this seminar, what we do today uh, on this evening. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe one, one additional question from your perspective. What needs to be done to promote the adoption? Yes. And so, uh, from my perspective, the first of all, the authorities can do much to encourage development of um, a, a AI in social security. For example, that uh, that will be that will be the uh, the special uh, uh, committee the special committee which will advise on how to uh, how to develop an of a um, ai uh, for the national economy other public bodies should promote this technology directly in the public administration also very important is funding from national and uh, international uh, sources, including European Union, uh, including uh, ELA. Another important aspect uh, is adoption of the technical and ethical standard. Yes, ethical standard of the building, building uh, AI solution. New technology has uh, to be safeguarded uh, in multiple ways during development as well as development stage, human oversight is required in the form of monitoring of data quality, testing output of, of an AI possibility to redress uh, of an automated decision to human decision. Thank you very much. Thanks. Stefano, from an OECD perspective, you know, what, what is your view or the view of OECD, what needs to be done to, uh, to promote the adoption in this area? I, th I think we, we have heard quite a bit already yeah. about data governance, mm -hmm. ethical standards, um, committees that provide guidelines on how to develop AI. I, I want to, to go back to the topic of my presentation and also to what Alexander said mm -hmm. about the importance of having skills and an awareness of the problem. Let me start from the awareness. Perhaps Alexander has showed us that we all need to become, to some extent, philosophers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if we mean a philosopher in terms of what well, the French philosopher Merleau-Ponty uh, had in mind, which is this ability to try to make sense of the world and having a critical attitude to things. Mm -hmm. Just stopping and stopping for a moment and and saying, uh, is this right? Does this does this make sense? Is this the, the direction where we want the world to to go? Uh, I think this is very important. And in combination with all the technical skills and abilities, the project management um, and, the, and the social skills that, that I mentioned, then the question is, uh, how do we achieve this? What kind of mix? of training interventions do we need? Mm -hmm. And here we, we can look and we should look uh, at technology for, uh, for an answer. There is an opportunity here, mm -hmm. at least for 
um, all uh, the more the, the the harder side of things. So all these uh, technical requirements and um, technical information, we can think about producing more attractive e-learning material, potentially using AI. So rather than giving people a huge textbook to read okay. or a, a classical uh, lecture, we can give them more modular training uh, that would make the subject more appealing, would make the process more flexible, they could do it in their free time and so on and so forth. And then, and I think this, this was shown today, we need to combine that and this reading and this, this, uh, this uh, asynchronous way of learning, we need to combine that with uh, human interaction and exchange as uh, Alexander has, uh, has showed us today. And as uh, we have seen in this room, uh, just uh, trying to uh, exchange and uh, make sense of what's happening together. Thanks a lot. So I would like to close the session. Thanks a lot for the deep insights and the very interesting and also critical discussions. Thanks again.